Hey folks, John Hazel here. Welcome back to Spay Fishing with John. This is a high water edition, so it's winter. We got a lot of high water. We're always chasing flows and trying to pick the right day to go. But you can have success in high water if you read the water correctly and you're patient. So we've got a big run here. And there's a you know there's a lot of water here to look at, but we're gonna we're gonna narrow it down to the inside run here, the inside of this run. So really, what high water does, it makes the river smaller. We're not gonna fish out in the heavy heavy water because steelhead, that's not where they want to be. So we're gonna fish the inside stuff. I'm gonna start here, work down to 100 or so yards, what I think is the prime water. I've got a light tip on, I've got a 13 half foot Sage Excel with a 15 foot Type 3 and so in the wide open spots I'm going to fish the longer rod with a Type 3 because I want my fly to swing right into the edge because they'll hold or, or move up through the soft edge under these conditions. So stay tuned, we're going to get some fishing done see if we can find one. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to start here. I've got a 500 Skagit Max in orange so you can see it on my Sage Excel 7136. Like I said before, we're not going to worry about the fast water. I might cast into it, but what I'm really worried about is really fishing it slow around to the hang down as I come around here. So we'll start with some fairly short casts to get going and then we're just going to roll right through here. Again, I've got a Type 3 on. The water on the inside is really soft, so I really want that fly to come around to the edge. Uh, if the water was a little dirtier, I would fish a real big bright fly. I've got a fairly large fly on. We've got about at least three feet of visibility today, which is really good for the size of the river today. The river's high. Most people would consider this too high to fish. And man, we've got some awesome steelhead water right here below us. We've got the main current coming out here and it's pretty quick and then over to my right there's water coming down through the willows and where these two little currents meet it's just a perfect little steelhead runway there's some steelhead rivers you'll fish in the winter where you really want high water some of them clear up really fast and once that water clears up they're a really tough fish to catch when the water's dirtier or higher those fish really like coming up the edge and so that just puts that fish in the strike zone. Sometimes the hardest, especially in the winter, the hardest fish to catch is when the river's low and clear. Either the fish have shot up at the higher water and they're just gone. They're up river or in the tribs getting ready to spawn or they're hiding in the tanks. And so the tank is the deep hole that typically for us is just really hard to fish. So there's definitely those sweet spots as river flows go up and down. And I think the key, for me at least, is go out and fish a river you're familiar with, or if you're trying to get familiar with a river, fish it at different flows. So if you go out and, and it's you know 8,000 or whatever the number, then you know what it looks like at 8,000. And if you can find three or four spots to fish at that flow, then those will always be spots at 8,000. Um, today we're closer to 5,000 where we're at. And uh, look at this beautiful swing water I got here below me. Like I said, the river for this flow is, has a lot of clarity. A good three, maybe four feet. It's just a little clearer than that steelhead green that, that we like to talk about and that we like. I spent a lot of time fishing the lower rogue in the winter and those fish will come up, you know, with a foot of visibility and they're coming up right on the edge. And so when you think about fish close to the ocean, they're going to take the path of least resistance and they'll come up in one, two, three feet of water. So you don't have to make super long casts. You don't need 
real heavy sink tips or heavy flies. You just need that fly in the traveling lane. The traveling lane is going to be that inside corner, that real nice slower inside edge that they can just cruise up. And that's kind of what we're fishing now. We're just fishing soft water. It's moving. And I'm fishing it as close to the edge as I can. I'm letting that swing across. I got a type three on. I've got a weighted fly, but it's not real heavy. And so far I haven't touched anything. I haven't touched bottom. I could let that fly swing, swing across even a little bit more. And if there's a fish out in the heavier water that wants to eat my fly, he can still eat it, even though I don't have a heavy fly or sink tip on. It's, it's sunk enough. If that fish wants to eat it, it's going to eat it. But when you choose a sink tip, you're also choosing where you want to catch that fish. And that's part of choosing a sink tip is before you choose a sink tip, you have to ask yourself, where do I think I'm going to catch the fish? Am I going to catch them out there? Or am I going to catch them right here? Well, if I think I'm going to catch them right here, I'm not going to put on T14. I'm going to put on, you know, right now I got a 15 foot type 3. And I like 15 foot sink tips on longer rods. This is a 13 and a half foot rod. And so I'll fish this rod where I can get away with it today. We'll, we'll fish some spots where I don't have an, as much room to cast. I'll be tighter to the bank. So I'll fish some of my shorter rods. But where I can get away with fishing this rod today, I will. The other thing about fishing high water is you got to be patient. You got to believe in what you're doing. I believe there's fish right here. So I'm going to be patient. I'm going to fish slow. Fish are more likely to move during high water. So I have to believe that there's a either fish holding here or fish are just slowly moving up into this soft spot because they don't want to be out in that heavy water. Now there might be fish down into some deep hole that you can't get your fly to. You might see a gear dude come down side drifting with a lot of weight and he'll catch one out there. But you're not going to catch that fish. You got to pick your water. You got to edit your water. So I've edited my water today down to this 150, 200 yard stretch. This swing is really incredible. Um, it's slow. I mean, the hardest thing for me and a lot of guys to learn as a swing fisherman is, a, you know, it's hard to bond with slow water. It's hard to relate to it, especially when you first start out. And this, I've, I've definitely fished slower water than this. Uh, but winter steelhead, they do like slow water. They do like slow water. So you have to figure out how to fish it and be confident that they're there. You know, there's probably a couple reasons why they like slower water. One, they burn, us, burn up less energy. And two, in the winter the water's colder so there's more oxygen. So they don't have to be out in the oxygenated faster water like they would be, like a summer steelhead would be in you know, July, August, September when water temps are higher. Just as this, I cast into this left current, and just as it meets up with this current coming at my feet here that's spilling over the gravel bar, just my swing just gets perfect. It slows down to the perfect speed, and just anywhere in here, I feel like I'm going to get grabbed. And I'm not casting real far. Don't need to here. I'm putting it out in that quicker water to get set up, get my fly sunk and mended. That's all I need to do right now. Get it out there. I'm just doing a light mend. There's my little fixer mend. And then I know because I've swung this several times already that it's just going to slow down right at this point. And right where it slows down there on this soft seam between there and the bank, I think is a strike zone. One thing I love about this Sage Excel 
13 and a half footer is just, it's a medium fast rod. And I can just do a really slow sweep into my D loop, just relaxed and pull the trigger. It's just so easy to cast, so fun to fish. You feel it bend. We fish a lot of fast rods these days. And so people really get accustomed to that. But there's just something so relaxing about doing that. Zero energy, zero effort, all timing. The Sage Excel series has that. The Mod series has that. And it just makes them really enjoyable to fish. Let the line load the rod for you. Pull the trigger and just watch it go. My camera guy, Chris, is really giving me a hard time about not catching a fish on film. He claims he's never seen me catch a fish. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's, really, it, it's really a sore spot in our relationship as the, the camera, you know, fisherman relationship. And I really hope to rectify that today as I'm kind of tired of hearing about it. You know, as light as spay rods are today, they're still heavy. If I'm gonna hold it, I'm not gonna hold it like this. My shoulder will get tired. But I like a high rod while I'm fishing, so often I'll just stick the rod butt in my, in my hip. And I like a high rod for a couple reasons. And the last reason being one of the best. But I like it for a few reasons. One, I don't want my running or shooting line affecting my swing. So after I get my mends done, and hell, I can mend from my hip, boom, there's my little fixer mend. But after I get my mends done, the high rod keeps the shooting or running line off the water. And then that allows me to have slack in my line. So from my rod tip to where it touches the water is slack. And that is called, according to Mr. Scott O'Donnell, fishing a soft fly. So when that fish grabs that fly, it doesn't feel tension. And so the fish is more likely to grab, chew, run with the fly if it doesn't feel like it's under tension. And this came up in a conversation. I was fishing with Scott, uh, winter steelhead, and we were fishing real, uh, a real close in spot. I was fishing a, these little pockets in this tail out and real short casts. And I cast into this little pocket with half the head of the line, if that. My fly's coming around and I have my rod tip low and I got grabbed and I missed the fish. And Scott came unglued, came out of his waders. Hazlet, fish the soft fly. You got to fish a soft fly. And if you've ever fished with Scott, he's very enthusiastic and very passionate about what he does. And so he runs out there, grabs my rod, and he says, go down there where that fish was. He says, go down there, grab the line. I go down there and I grab the line and he puts the rod tip down like I have it here and he says, now pull on that. I pull on it and I feel it, it, it's tight. And then he lifts the rod up like this and he says, now pull on it. And I pull on it and there was slack. I could feel the slack. And so, Having that rod tip up gives you a little slack and the fly feels softer to the fish. And the fish, especially at short range, because there's the shorter your line is, the less stretch there's gonna be and the less slack there's likely to be. So especially on those shorter casts, fishing a soft fly is important. And if I get blown up right here, I've got a little slack for that fish to take before it 
and the line comes tight. That's more time for that hook to get in its mouth and that hook to set. Now if I was making a long, long cast, instead of mending with one hand, I'd mend with two. But this is just pretty mellow, shorter cast. Mending's pretty easy. But I like to mend with two hands, especially if I'm trying to make an aggressive mend. The two-handed mend is just the way to go. You fish all day, you fish for several days, and you're mending a 13-foot rod with one hand, you're gonna get tired. You're gonna get tired. A little two-hand mend there. There's my little fixer mend to mend the back of the line. Rod butt goes in the hip. Now I just wait and let it, watch it swing. And one thing you gotta remember when you're trying to swing your fly to the edge is that the longer the sink tip is, the longer it takes for your fly to come around and your sink tip to straighten out. So once your the floating part of your line is straight, well, that doesn't mean you're done with the swing. I got a 15 foot tip on here, so that thing's trailing behind the whole way. So once that body, that line comes straight, like where my wrist is bent, then I gotta wait for that sink tip to come around, the fly to come around. My fly is just crawling. It's just crawling across this soft tail. We're in the tail of this run, just starting to move into the kind of the top of the next one and the speed. You know, normally this run, this is the worst part of it, but at high water, it feels like the best. It feels like the best. I know there's some bigger rocks in here, so if fish are holding, I'm in the game. So I double spade my way down to this point because I had room. Now I'm getting to where I got to wait a little tighter to the trees. The D loop of the double spay penetrates a little deep for what we're doing here. So I'm just switching to a snap T type cast and the D loop forms more at an angle. So this gives me a little more room to cast. There's something we, I call D-loop awareness. You know, awareness in general is huge in spay casting, fishing in general, but D-loop awareness, where am I gonna put my D-loop? You gotta have room for it. At high water, you're gonna fish a lot of spots where you're real tight to a bank. And so, gotta know where that D-loop's going, you gotta have room for it. My strike zone is kind of widening, it feels, as I move down here. So I'm gonna lengthen my cast, to maximize my swing. Get it set up a little early. I don't wanna miss a fish because I'm not casting far enough, but as you wade down, just keep reading the water. Look for those subtleties. In this case, like I said, the strike zone's widened, so my swing is better further out than it was up there. Add a little line, stick with that till I feel like I need to do something different. All right, well, that's our first spot. Didn't find a fish, on to the next.